So by now you should know a little bit about how the ear actually works, the amplification of the airwaves and how that actually gets transmitted into vibrations that are transmitted to little hairs and how these hairs then interpret those signals and then send information to your brain to help you be able to understand what it is you're actually listening to and hearing. So here's a quick little diagram showing what a cochlear implant looks like. There's an external part to it and then you have an internal part to it. Basically what you're trying to do is you're trying to amplify sounds and bypass the broken bits. So in this case the broken bits could be um, hairs inside the cochlea that aren't really responding and even if they are kind of stimulated they're not somehow sending the vibrations that are necessary in order for them to get interpreted by the nerves. So cochlear implants give the sense of sound to those who have non-functional cochlear hair cells. And remember that in the cochlea, there's fluid that moves around that stimulates these hair cells as the fluid moves backward and forward. So the external part is gonna have a microphone to detect sound, same thing like what I'm using right now to record my voice. So that microphone is going to take the sound in there and there might be some algorithms built in to filter out filter out frequencies that are not normally used in speech. And then there's a transmitter in there that's going to transmit these frequencies to the next part in here. And the internal sequence here, the internal implant is located behind the ear. It has a receiver to detect signals from the actual transmitter and a stimulator to convert those signals that have been received from the auditory sound to electrical impulses. And then there are electrodes that are going to carry these impulses to the cochlea. But it's pointless to bring this information to the cochlea and then try to stimulate those broken hairs. So we're actually going to stimulate the auditory nerve directly. So I think that's a key point here. Stimulating the auditory nerve directly doesn't have to go through these non-functional hair cells. So that's the idea there. You're basically taking sound wave information, picking up by a microphone. A microphone has a diaphragm in it that's going to vibrate back and forth according to the frequencies that are coming from speech. Uh, a little bit of computer processing is going to filter out the frequencies that are not using, not being used. If there's kind of wind whooshing noises that aren't uh, actually used in speech. I'm sure Siri on my iPhone has some kind of filter that is actually going to filter out frequencies that are not normally used in human speech that are being used. And so all of that is going to be transmitted to the internal piece and then you have conversion of the signals basically to electrical impulses and then that is going to directly stimulate the auditory nerve. So a cool little example, you probably don't think very much about it, hearing aids, they seem to be just like a lot of people think they're just little microphones that make things louder so that when you can't hear something, if you scream into somebody's ear, you might think that somehow that's better. But in most cases, that's not exactly what's going on with hearing loss. So cochlear implants. The underlying understanding of science and how it leads to advances in technology. Cochlear implants. <laughs>